Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode two of Fellowship in Essential Oils. Liz, we made it to a second episode. We did, and weren't the comments beautiful? Thanks so much, everybody, for the lovely reception. Yeah, whether you've been listening to us on one of the podcast outlets or you've been watching us on YouTube, we really, really appreciate it. You know, Liz and I sit here and have a bit of a natter for about 30 minutes, and we're glad that someone else is benefiting from our nattering as well, aren't we? Not going into a black hole. That's nice. No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But today we're going to go down a deep, deep hole kind of thing. We're going to go in and explore an essential oil that is kind of a new kid on the block, but is definitely making an, an impression in the aromatherapy world. And that's Copa Eba. So, yeah, Copa- I mean, we say we new kid on our block, but in Ecuador and Peru, it's their traditional medicine. And in the U, I found lots and lots of sort of Victorian recipes uh, with it in, lots of medicines with it in. So new to essential oils, but not not to plant medicine. Mm. So this, if you haven't heard of copa eba, it is a resin essential oil. Now, normally when we think of resin essential oils, we think of, you know, frankincense and myrrh. This is extracted a little bit different. And if you know how they extract maple um, syrup out of a maple tree, they kind of drill a little hole in it. And it kind of pours out. And when you steam distill that, that's where you get the essential oil. So it's not so much the picking it off the edge like you'd see with the frankincense and myrrh. There's a different, uh, the family of trees, um, you know, in parts of South America where we get copa iba from. And to describe the aroma, I would say, Liz, that, you know, it's probably not going to win the award for the best. It's not a dreadful smelling one. It's quite a faint smelling, kind of a, a slight woody smell. Would you agree? Yeah, it kind of is a bit resinous, woody, woody, isn't it? Yeah, it's not something you, the fragrance houses are going to go mad for, is it? Which is great because that'll mean that they're not going to hike our prices up too. Very true, very true. But what is amazing about it is how many people have found the benefits of Copiba and uh, are singing its, you know, its um, praises and that kind of thing. So do you want to start off by talking a little bit about the physical benefits of it, Liz, and I'll jump in after you? Oh, well, yeah, so we, <laughs> give me the hard bit, but, um, <laughs> but we talk about the indigenous medicine. They use it predominantly for respiratory problems, um, particularly coughs and colds, but asthma um, and also uh, COPD, but also gynecological problems, period pains, that kind of thing. But um, when we look at it, from a molecular point of view, which the scientists are doing a lot because it has a very important molecule in it, then we can draw that out to understand a lot more about it. So one of the reasons why copaiba is, in fact, yes, yeah, so that's how they say it in, in, uh, in the South America, copaiba. So, um, one of the reasons why it's so popular is because it's very high in a constituent called beta caryophylline, And you know you've been doing this to, this job too, too long when you say, oh, well, my favourite molecule is beta caryophylline." <laughs> <laughs> I get really excited about beta caryophylline. Um, so, like, the plants uh, make beta caryophylline as a way of telling uh, creatures at their roots to get lost, you've injured me too much, and then to signal to insects, other weevils and things in the soil to say, come and get rid of them and let, help me heal. And this is really translates really well into the human medicine. So beta caryophylline is so important right now because we know that it, interacts with something called the endocannabinoid system, which is our primary endocrine system. So our endocrines are obviously what uh, we secrete for stress, for hormones, all of those things. But the reason why we say that the endocannabinoid system is it, uh, the primary endocrine system is because it's like the volume switch. And for it to work really well, we need to be eating lots of omega-3, which to be honest, not many of us do. And so then it can become dysfunctional. 
Um, and the endocannabinoid system has got two different molecules, two different receptors, it has several actually, but these are the two main ones. CB1 is in the, the brain and the, the, spinal, uh, the spinal cord, and it, they, that molecule um, looks after things like memory, makes you forget things, for example, it's involved in PTSD, uh, appetite, nausea, um, itching, pain, lots of different things, but we're not interested in that one. We're interested in the CB2 receptor, which is in not the brain, not the um, spinal cord, although I have to say there are small amounts in the, in the brain, but it's in the periphery. It's in the, on the blood and the lymphatic uh, tissues. And what this does is it modulates three different things, pain, inflammation, and immunity right so the reason why it's so interesting from a, um, a nervous system point of view is it because it signals backwards we call it retrograde signaling and it's what tells the body i need some more of that or you haven't sent me enough of that or i need or this is going worse so it's a bit like saying to somebody do you want a bit more cake and somebody goes yes please this is what's happening. And so if the endocannabinoid system's not working, nobody ever asks you if you want any more cake and how bad would that be? So now you may think that this is a Zumba cane that I never use, but actually it's not. It's a scientific model of, of a nerve, right? So if you put a nerve underneath the microscope, you'd be able to see it has what's called a bouton, which is here. And, Hear them? Can you hear the neurotransmitters? So that's uh, serotonin, dopamine, that kind of thing, right? So normal signaling goes forward. Presynaptic nerve, postsynaptic nerve. But the endocannabinoid system says, sending it back, you didn't send enough. You didn't send enough. So if we can interact with the CB2 receptor, we can send messages backwards to say, turn down that bit pain. My immunity is not strong enough. I need to push it up and we need to switch down our inflammation. So consequently, oils that are rich in beta caryophylline are good for inflammation, immunity and uh, pain. <laughs> That's where I was in the list then. And the reason why we've come full circle now, the reason why copaiba is so important and everybody wants to use it is because it contains huge amounts of beta caryophylline. You do need to look at who, which brand you're looking at because it can be anywhere from the, about 20% up to about 70%, depending, and you'd, do, you'd check your GCMS report to do that. And to be clear, it's not the only um, oil that has it in. Um, black pepper has beta, a beta caryophylline, for example. So we can use it in different ways, but copaiba, particularly copaiba langistorphi, rather than copaiba officinalis, has very high levels of what's called beta uh, uh, cannabimimetic in that it, it mimics uh, cannabinoids to be able to interact with the CB2 receptor. Over to you. <laughs> you did it. Well, done. I, <laughs> well, one of the things that I love about, and as I've learned more, you know, I, I am also getting like you where I, I try not to talk too much chemistry to sound overwhelming. But what I've found really interesting is how plant chemistry almost replicates itself throughout. So another, yeah. you know, another well-known one is linalool. Now, linalool is well-known to be in things like lavender. But some people, you know, lots of people love lavender. Other people, blah, they hate it. But if you want to get that calming of the central nervous system, which we get from linalool, there's bergamot, which smells totally different. There's pedigrain. Basil has it. Coriander can have it in. All these different ones. So, okay, we get our beta caraphylene from, obviously, our copa eba, and that's why we're talking about copa eba. But something that copa eba is very often compared to is CBD oil because it also yeah. works with the um, endocannabinoid system as well. However, what I find there are three, you know, and I know um, that you've done a great, amazing book on um, this as well, but with CBD, yeah, there it is. <laughs> oh, look at that. Just having to be on the bookshelf behind you. 
Um, you know, <laughs> what I've found with CBD oil is there's three challenges. One, first of all, it um, it can be expensive. It can be quite expensive. Two, we've obviously got legalities in different places around the world and actually getting it to there. And three, you know, it does also contain THC, which does have some concerns. Now, you can get some CBD oils where that's taken out of, but there's actually a research done and about two-thirds of CBD oils are mislabeled that are available on the market. So you're actually not too sure what you're getting. So that's the great thing is you get a very similar effect and obviously there's going to be similar effects and slightly different. But Copa Iba, kind of, it's cheaper, it's readily available around the world, and it doesn't contain that THC, which is going to be a worry. Plus, what you find is that um, it, it's been found to seem to get into the end, signal to the endocannabinoid system quicker, like the pathway it takes is quicker. And there has been some research that's been finding that the longer you use Copa Iba, the more the endocannabinoid system develops more receptors to it, and will actually be more, so it actually gets better as time goes on, which when we think about pharmaceuticals, sometimes, you know, they can go backwards as time goes on as well, not saying that CBD oil is. So for anyone who, you know, people may not have heard of Copa Iba, but they've heard of CBD oil, I think, you know, I'm always like, if, you've taught, if you're looking at CBD oil, have a look at Copa Iba for many different reasons as well. Yeah, I would agree with that. I have another model. Ah, look this at you. Time, <laughs> this, is, this time it's a mauled up football with two receptors. So this is a starry receptor and this is a silver receptor. So this is a CB2 receptor, CB2 cell. And then we have what's called an orthosteric receptor and an allosteric receptor. So CB2, uh, CBD works on the allosteric receptor. It's like the back door. So I always think of it, remember Prince's song, Raspberry, she came in the outdoor. That's the outdoor, right? So THC, you're quite right, interacts with the, um, usually the CB1 receptor actually, not CB2, but if we talk about CB1 here, it interacts orthosterically, THC does. But mm -hmm. CBD comes in the back door and switches it down. So even if we've got huge amounts of CBD, then we, um, that will we'll switch down the psychoactive effects of THC. So that's not so much of a concern as people might think. One thing that I would flag up that perhaps isn't seen when you're looking at essential oil medicine, but when you're looking at like molecular medicine, is CB2 is being, re the CB2 receptor is being researched in depth because not only those areas that I talked about, the immunity, the pain, the inflammation, but it seems very likely that it will be able to be used to help people who have got multiple sclerosis and ALS. And so they're researching what we called allosteric modulators, such as caryophylline, to be able to use those as medicines. But one of the things that is slowing that down is long-term stimulation of the CB2 receptor leads to cancer and bone, loss of bone density. So we should be really careful, not just not to say, right, we're gonna be using any particular essential oil long term, we should be switching it up and changing it around because inadvertently, even if you weren't even trying to modulate the CB2 receptor, but essentials have got so many other chemicals that are doing so many things. We have, we, we, essentials don't have side effects, they have many main effects. So what we don't want to do is put too much pressure onto the CB2 receptor because of course, when that starts working, then it turns something else off. And we know that that causes a tumour formation and loss of bone density. I think just what, what you said there, and this is something I always like to get on my little pony and my little bandwagon and talk about, is, you know, some people get their favourite essential oils and they become really loyal and they use them over and over again. Now, we know that people don't go, you've got to eat your tomatoes. We've got to eat our vegetables. And why do we eat our vegetables? Because we get something different from a tomato, from a carrot, from cabbage, and so on. 
So, you know, there are lots of great oils for sleep. There are lots of great ones for skincare. Mix them up a little bit so that you're getting, you know, all the goodness and not, like you said, there can be, you know, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. Yeah, I, yeah, I definitely think so. And 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 I'm one of the world's worst. I mean, I haven't got my oils behind uh, behind me today, but people who watch my videos will know that there's there are actually 450 oils there, of which I probably use about 20 all of the time. The same ones, the healing clicks, because they're the ones that I know. But as you quite rightly say, you need to not rely on one too long because there's, there's so you need to be kind of leveling it out over a playing field of several different oils. So sticking with the physical attributes of Copaiba, where would you personally and, you know, the clients that you work with, what, what are you using it for specifically normally? When do you reach so, the Copaiba? Yeah, so, so it's one of my go-to ones if somebody's got an infection. Um, so people who follow my page will know that I've been really quite ill with a horrible cough and so I was really trying to boost you're not supposed to say boost because the FDA would say we haven't got a license to say boost, but I'm going to say boost immunity, <laughs> reduce inflammation. Um, and, and actually being completely uh, sort of controversial here, I always use it in tandem with CBD because I think that the two really work really well together. But um, it's not so much inflammation because I have other oils that I'm addicted to for inflammation, but certainly immunity. Um, and and pain, yeah. Mm, I think for pain, it, it's you? a great for for pain. Definitely, it's a great one. Um, I love a bit of layering with that, with a bit of frankincense, wintergreen, and lemongrass. Do it, leaving a couple of minutes in between, and normally copaiba, the last one. I have Ooh, heard, funny. I have heard some rumors, and I'm not going to say that I, I I'm not going to put my my word behind it, but that some people I've heard in you know around the traps that copaiba helps other oils absorb through the skin topically now I don't know if that's true or not um yeah I've heard it around I, the way I, I, yeah I've seen this myth as well um and I've also seen people saying things that people lie about with copaiba how can that be true and and I'd I would say that I think that that's a mishmash of two things that are true that are not true, but I, I can't say for complete, uh, completely mm. if I've got it. But there are certain essential oils that are being researched to help other medicines to go into the system faster. So, yep. for example, lavender helps. It's called transdermal application. I wouldn't be surprised to find that beta caryophylline is a tra helps transdermal application simply because it brings down inflammation and so therefore there's not so much of a defense me mechanism. But also, I think maybe that's kind of, excuse my language, a bit of bastardized version of synergy. Um, mm. So what we say is when we've got one or two or three oils together, what they tend to do is create a stronger effect through synergy. Got you. Um, yep. But but I don't I don't know. I have heard that, but I, I wouldn't say I, it's not what I see. But then I'm not looking for it either. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think pain is going to be the great one. But I find that you know it has such a beautiful calming energy to it. Um, for anyone who's just feeling, you know, when we look at the leading cause of death of humans in this world, it used to be contagious diseases. But we kind of got that all all under wraps of you know a little while ago. It's inflammation. You know, inflammation causes cancers, it causes diabetes, it causes asthma. You know, even parts of the brain um, becoming found in scans of people with depression have inflammation. And we have, you know, you spoke about omega-3 oils that we need. Um, there are two main omegas that we need in our diet, omega-3 and omega-6. And I always think of them as two kids on a seesaw. Omega-3 turns down inflammation and omega-6 turns it on. And people are like, oh, well, omega-6 is bad. But we do need some inflammation in our body because, you know, a, a basic example if i cut myself or if i hurt myself i need a bit of inflammation as everything rushes there that type of thing but we need that seesaw to be even the average western diet is 16 to 1 where we're eating 16 lots of omega-6 to only that little bit of omega-3 so that's why we have so much inflammation in our body and all the different health challenges as well so like you said it's great for copy it's great for inflammation and pain is there many and immunity? It's hard to yeah. find someone someone in the world who isn't dealing with either pain, too much inflammation somewhere, or yeah. Um, I, I agree, and and 
uh, when we're talking about molecules as we are, that you can't avoid it when you're talking about a copaiba. It, we, we also kind of go into the realm of psychoneuroendocrinology, how the, it's like the bridge between the mind and the, the body. And for example, there's lots of proof that says that people who are in hostile marriages, their wounds heal slower. So mm. this, uh, and so this kind of, I, I always talk about, like from an Ayurvedic point of view, the pitta dimension of, of heat in inflammation, you know, it's not just sore skin, it's, it, it's angry, angry right the way through. And, you know, this, how the cystitis gets hot and, and inflamed. Inflammation can be on lots of different levels. And whilst we don't see it written down that copaiba is for fury, definitely, I would say that it was. But um, <laughs> indigenous medicine also says, you know, it, it's a heart medicine. Mm. You know, soothing, soothing from a love point of view, soothing to anger. Yeah. And one thing I should say, you know, here in, you know, we all have our governing bodies in, in, in every country. Here in Australia, we've got our TGA, which says what you can and can't say. Um, we actually have it listed as a, um, as a soft gel medicine here um, for benefits of the digestive system and the respiratory system. Um, one thing I have noticed, not with everyone, but with some people, because of its nice calming effect, if they take it during the day, they do find themselves to be a little bit kind of not as sprightly, kind of a little bit drowsy. So some people prefer to, you know, if they are using Cobiba, prefer to use it in the evening as well. Some people take it in the morning and it helps them to feel a bit more serene throughout the day. But it's just, you know, for each person, if you're going to be using Cobiba, you may want to be mindful of, may not be the best to try it for the first time on a day where you need to shine brightly kind of thing. Yeah, I would say that's true. I mean, we, we talk about beta carry off thing, but obviously that, well, it, it's a perfect situation. You look, you're looking at about sort of 60% of the oil. So there's 40% other um, different constituents in there. For example, alpha humulene, which is an isomer, which means it's like the same chemicals, just uh, arranged in a different way. And alpha humulene is brilliant for sleep. And so, yeah, that will be where the, oh, I'm getting a bit dozy. Oh, it's not like it, it's dangerous to to um, to drive or anything like that, but it is a bit like Sunday afternoon after you've had your lunch, you know, you're just like, oh, had enough now, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so I think it's great for, great for that. Me, personally, I love it on the soles of my feet when I go to bed at night for a bit of a calm down as well. Um, and also a drop with moisturiser um, can be really, really great as well. So, um, and, and on the face. Um, it's, I find it really nice for the face. Yeah, and and again, from a skincare point of view, yes, lovely, lovely. But if you've got like redness on your skin, so rosacea, or if you're prone to act uh, to acne, which is you know angry acne or eczema, psoriasis, dermatitis, all of those have an inflammatory uh, nature, but also an in, uh, an immunity dimension to them, and and so yeah, very helpful idea. So let's look at, you, you touched a little bit on um, the more the emotional and the deeper levels of Copaiba. For you on that, that more holistic level, where does Copaiba sit? So, yeah, I would say about anger, but I would talk about how people get incensed. So I'm going to deliberately shift this off the question like a politician here and say we, we talk about medical astrology and medical astrology puts anything to do with the electrical mechanisms of the body under uranus or as i like to say uranus but <laughs> and so but so um uranus has a a, a, a like a an unexpected dimension to it but also an explosive dimension to it but, but um, Uranus is about the individual and the collective. And so I always think about it like I joined a choir once and I was the youngest there by about 40 years. And <laughs> I was there for a, a very short amount of time, but people immediately thought, oh, she knows about computers, she'd be great for helping us with the marketing. And immediately I was sucked into the very core of the choir. I was in the decision makers. And so like I became part of the collective. But 
it became very clear that there were a lot of people who didn't want to move on from the way that they'd done. And so there was like a, a part of me that was like, I can do this different. I could do this better, which is, you know, this is how the world develops, isn't it? And this is how the, the Uranian ideal of, of making evolution, really. Mm. And so this idea of I've just had enough of the way you're doing it. I've, you know, I've had enough of this marriage I've had enough of this job I could do this better I could do it better on my own Copaiva goes go on then go on then go on have a go and it's very good for saying uh, don't listen don't procrastinate don't don't get sucked into somebody else's do it do it do it do it um from that focusing point of view that's that's how I use Copaiva yeah interesting so obviously then you know we, we know we talk near the end about which planet we would associate it with? So you're Copa Eva and Uranus, yeah? Uranus, come on. Oh, <laughs> I might blush if I say it that way. <laughs> I'll start talking about penis trees in a bit, penis extras, and we'll be well away. <laughs> Excellent, exactly. We'll have, to, we'll have to be not safe for children on our podcast. No, <laughs> yeah. awesome. So, you know, we, we said last week, we disagreed last week when we were talking about Melissa and the astrology. So when I work with Copaiba, you know, I love to look at where in the tree or where in the plant the oil comes from. That's going to give you a really indication on, on what kind of medicine it brings in. So when we look at resin oils, where are they in the tree? They're deep within. So frankincense, we know, probably the most famous resin oil, he's known as the king of the oils. And frankincense, when we, you know, when we talk about Frankie, I'll go on my, you know, wax lyrical about the divine masculine and myrrh being almost his feminine counterpart helps us connect to our masculine and our feminine sides and heal them. When I started working with Copa Eba, and I remember I'd use it each evening, and the phrase that just kept on echoing in my mind was, who am I? Who am I? Now, if you think whenever someone says, who are you, what do we do? We know we give them our name. We might say what our occupation is. We might say, oh, I'm a teacher or I'm a lawyer or something. You might say, I'm a wife, I'm a mother. You might say I'm a British citizen or an Australian citizen. But if you think about all those things that I've listed, we're not them because you can move country. You can lose your relationships. You can change your job. So these are hats that we wear. So what I find is Copa Iba doesn't ask you who are you, but actually work out who you are not. And in stripping away that, because when we are a mother or a partner or a teacher, there's also these standards of I need to be that. I need to be a good mother. I need to be a good citizen and these types of things. And this, when I remember when I was studying at the New York School of Philosophy, they talked about the unchanging observer, the part of us that never changes. And I find Copa Iba starts to take you back to that because in life we are playing so many different roles and so much um, pressure to fulfil those roles that we lose track of who we are just trying to be good and show that off to the world. So it's a really nice one of not even get it. You may never get to the answer of who you are, but Copa Eba just wants you to make sure you strip away who you're not. So it really helps you to get into that and can really bring in a sense of peace of like, oh, well, you know, I don't have to be that. That's just a role or a title I've given to myself and then I've taken on the expectations of society on how I need to live them as well. So it really does help to soothe that. And we are talking about anger before, probably gets a little bit of anger and frustration out. So a very, very peaceful oil. And for that reason, I actually like to work with Copa Ebert with Pluto because Pluto gets back to who we are at that core, getting in with our core essence and stripping away all the bullshit of, um, you know, the ego and the un the um the motivations that are non-authentic or not for the greatest in that way. Um, you know, I, I find Cooper Ebert gets really in quite in, into the dark. He, he wants to go into the darkness, into the soul where there is no no glitter and no glamour and no light in that type of way. So I love Cooper Ebert with that platonic type of energy. Wow. I love that. <clears throat> mm. So, yeah. I, I think almost there's an overlap between the two, isn't there? Because, you know, when you when we have this idea of the individual and the collective, it's weird how it's almost like a paradox, isn't it? Am I am I me or am I part of this? Am I part of this or am I me? The two the two come together. And this break this this Uranian idea of breaking out 
Mm. is all about the individual genius, isn't it? It's about that quintessential part of you. And as you quite rightly say, that's part of the, the, the uh, Plutonian journey. And it's interesting how we've both picked outer planets, not mm. inner planets. Yeah. So, so like inner planets, if people don't know, are like um, Mars, Mercury, Venus. They're to do with the the inside of you, the the, the quick moving stuff, really. But the uh, the outer planets are much slower. They're more to do with generational and the outer world. And so, how we are relating to our outer world is interesting, especially when it is from the bark of the tree. Um, yeah. Yeah. But also just sort of building on what you said, which I absolutely loved about where you get the part of the tree. Um, what people may not know is that the, the Copaiba tree acts slightly differently to the to a frankincense tree. We don't have to like cut, uh, slash it to make it mm. bleed. It almost it becomes almost pregnant with so much oil. And so by tapping it, we're actually relieving that. And so you can see how that becomes like a gynecological medicine as well. And, and Pluto mm -hmm. rules that kind of sexuality, doesn't it? Gen Genitive, urinary problems, uh, sexual diseases, that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I love, I love that. I think that's a really good way of looking at it. Yeah, and one, one other thing that just came in that I just want to throw in there that I feel some people might need to hear as well is how we decide whether we're doing good or bad in the world is based on the feedback of everyone. So, you know, we were talking about the, the kind comments that we got after the first um, episode. And so we're like, okay, well, we're doing okay. But then if everyone's saying we're doing bad, we are like, oh, we're not doing good. And it's interesting how just the feedback of the people around us, remember that everyone has their own prejudices. You know, when we look at as children, our, our parents are, you know, we realise when we get older, our parents aren't perfect. So we can't always... Copa Iber allows you to come in and actually check in and listen to, am I doing good? Who am I? And am I shining who I'm meant to be? Rather than am I pleasing the rest of the world around me? Because we get partners that aren't happy with us. We get people that aren't happy with us. So it, it, it comes back to our core and can be a really strengthening to take away that, that, that fieriness around us, I find. Well, I suppose that come back, comes back to what I said about the Indigenous medicine of, of coming from the heart, doesn't it? Yeah. How, how do I feel about that? But that's, in, that's really interesting and useful to me, what you've just said there, Adam, because um, I had the loveliest um, occasion on Friday, I think, and a lady messaged me and she said, thanks for doing a review of my book. Her name's Shelley Enteen, by the way. The, the book's called The Last Priestess, a little plug for her. And she said, I've done a draw of the, the people who've done reviews. I want to do you a reading. And I was like, oh, OK, well. I didn't realise how good a reading off Shelley is. So she did me this amazing astrology. And uh, she said, one of the things I can see about you is that if people, if you think you're knocked or you think things are going wrong, you know, the Cancerian goes back into a shell and you become very narky and defeated. And that, that was a very astute thing to see for somebody who didn't know me. All my, friend, all my friends and family were just like, oh, shit, you're a nail on the head. But you quite rightly say, that is how I use Copaiba to say, don't be distracted by what people are saying. Don't get drawn off. Use your vision. Stay true to what you're trying to do. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Now, you, you've mentioned the heart a few times. So would Copaiba be a heart chakra oil, in your opinion? Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. Um, yep. I, I think that we have to acknowledge that there's probably like sacral chakra stuff because there's so much gynecology but yeah i think so i think just this huge pressure of inflammation at the heart maybe we should say coronary medicine to do with that but yeah to do with the love to do with anger you know that and, and i i'm really interested in this polarity between you know the opposite to love is not hate it's indifference and that mm. kind of that, that kind of feeling of do you know what stop caring about that you've got another vision you know mm. yeah interesting another chakra that i actually really like to use copa e before so we know the seven main chakras but as you know human consciousness has become more um attuned to more subtle vibrations we start to identify other chakras and two key ones are one above our head that's called the soul star chakra and one called the earth star chakra 
Now, if you're not familiar with the Earth Star Chakra, it's uh, th- about 30 centimetres below the feet. And whereas your base chakra is just about you feeling safe in this physical realm, can you pay your bills and feed yourself and so on? The Earth Star Chakra is about your connection and your relationship with every consciousness on this Earth. So every plant, every animal, every human, every rock and that type of thing, and feeling that sense of oneness and, and feeling at home. And I find that Copa Ibra is really good for kind of bringing you back down for realizing your value and realizing that you are part of this web of life that's here on earth as well. So, you know, anoint, doing any kind of things like just anointing on the soles of your feet and then putting your feet bare on the earth and just feeling at home. And when we work with our earth star chakra and we start to feel that oneness, you can be in a forest all by yourself, but you're surrounded by company of consciousness. And even if you're having a, where you're feeling like you're having a weekend where you have no friends or you're having issues with work, it doesn't matter because that's only the human consciousness. The trees are still supporting you and so on. So Copa Eva can really bring in that support and that strength um, overall of kind of channeling through that earth star chakra. So, I, I, yeah, play around with it if that, if, if you're into the chakras as well, for everyone to try. Mm. I, love, I love that. Actually, I, I watched, I did a bit of research. I did a bit of homework because it's not like me to be unprepared. And I watched your video about Copa Eva. So I knew you were going to say about the earth star chakra. And I was fascinated by that because as a Melissa, we talked about me being a Melissa priestess last time, we say that Persephone lives in the um, um, in the Earth Star. And of course, she mm. is the underworld and the underworld is Pluto. You know, that's, uh, that's yeah. where you've come, you've come full circle. True, but yeah. also just the, the, the sheer imagery of, of, of the tree, really that if you've never seen it, you should have a look and see if you can see it because it's absolutely colossal. It's very, very tall, reaches right above the canopy of the rainforest. So, you know, hundreds of feet tall. So the roots that, well, they say that the roots are three times the width of the ca- of the height of the canopy, don't they, for a tree? So mm. imagine the sheer hold that that has, you know, rooting you into the ground. Um, and if you're like me and you do get angry, if you're prone to anger, and not so much now, I haven't got such red hair, but very, I can be very volatile. And I do feel when I get angry, I'm, I'm not in my feet, you know, I'm yeah. up, up here. So that, that whole bringing down of energy, yeah, I can see how that would work. So Copa Iba, I think it's an essential, essential oil. It's a, it's a beautiful <laughs> one. Yeah. <laughs> in so many different ways so i hope everyone's enjoyed learning a little bit about that and please make sure wherever you're listening or watching that you do leave a comment tell us what you think and we love to know how everyone else is using their oils as well maybe you've got a you know an interesting blend that you love as well but now what are we going to talk about next week well i got to choose copa eva this week so it's liz's turn to choose about what we're going to talk about next week i have no idea what it's going to be so and neither no, do you I'm this gonna, week I'm- well, I figured what I'd do is be me. <laughs> so my, my thought process was, first of all, I thought, oh, we'll do geranium because I love geranium and I'll be easy then. And then I thought, no, no, no. Adam knows loads about Kanuka. I want to learn about Kanuka. I thought, no, 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 we're not going to do that. So the bees came to me in the dream and said, you should be doing it off your cards. Yes, I'm going to shuffle the cards and I'm going to draw one. So no homework done. Say stop. Stop. Uh, oh, <laughs> as Mr. Australian, how do you feel about being on home to earth with beautiful sandalwood? Very good indeed. Wow. Okay. Oh, I bet you do. <laughs> well, you picked it. So next yep. week, oh, I'm not very good on sandalwood. I need to get the, the textbooks out this week then. So next week we'll be talking about sandalwood. I guess we're going to talk about sandalwoods from, you know, from Australia, from India, from Hawaii. We'll kind of dance around the globe a little bit and dive into them all. Um, But we'll be back next week at the same time. Remember, wherever you are watching or listening, the more you like, the more you subscribe, if you can leave reviews, all that type of thing, that helps get out the beautiful knowledge of essential oils to more and more people. And, yeah, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Bye. Please like and share us. Bye.